would have they would have transgressed into that, yeah? which took me by surprise. And I thought about it and thought, yeah, that is proportional. You're right. Infinite for infinite is proportional. Yes. Mm. So so far I was convinced. But what I was aware <laughs> of that, that we didn't get into. On that point, there is a there's an ayah that says. A verse in the Quran which says that which means had they been so like for example now we're assuming that they're being punished in a hellfire yeah. and they'll be screaming for the escape yeah. and the narrative here is that God tells us in the Quran had they been returned to the earth they would have persisted in that which they were told not to do right. which is going back to kufr or this yeah. disbelief yeah. so in other words they uh, those individuals like you said i mean had they had they lived for even a longer time yeah. the time that they had been on the earth can be generalized yeah. uh, would otherwise be generalized to uh, a longer period of time yeah. so what ali said there, there, and Tony, just add on there's another verse where it says, I have one of those right? oh, oh you should no, have no, 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 forget it. It's on you should have Please. I just like equal representation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. <laughs> oh, I didn't know I had that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know I had that. Well, is it two on two now? No, that's oh. fine. Yeah, that's fine. You know, there's another verse okay, so that's what God says, just to add on to what I said. Yeah. Where God says, for example, you got a mosquito on your head. They... Yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if, uh, if God was to show them the unseen, yeah. they would still say, our eyes have bewitched us. Yeah. So even if God is saying, if I was to show them the heavens and the earth, and yeah. they came and saw everything, they'll say, this is just magic. Yeah. So I thought your answer was really yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Within the context of what you believe, it makes sense. It's self-consistent. Yeah. Then my concern was, okay, but then, although you've balanced the infinite punishment with the infinite transgression, it speaks hugely to an issue of determinism and free will, because now, have you seen the film Minority Report? No, but can I just, can I come back on this point? Yeah, Sorry. Sure. Uh, and I don't want to go into too much technical detail, okay? That but is determinism. Uh, uh, right, 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 it's a technical topic. There is actually somebody called Nejmuddin at uh -huh. who is a student of Ibn Taymiyyah, who wrote a book which was a book of jurisprudence. Actually, it's not relevant to um, eschatology or theodicy or theology. Sorry, what's eschatology? Eschatology is the, is the study of the afterlife, okay. yeah, study of the other. So what he actually, he said something, but it had been refuted, uh, I'll say it. He said that one view, and that's his view, it's a very minority view, is that if God punishes us based on what we would have done, had we been completely free. Sure. That's his view. He says that, if, so God, so because the question of, um, if if God knows everything and you know that kind of question and he's done qadr, he's uh, predetermined everything how do we have free will how does it work yeah. his view is he predicates it on what we would have had what we would have done had there been a, uh, an event whereby everybody would have been completely free yeah. without the determination of God however there, there is a problem with that line of reasoning uh -huh. The problem is, uh, from our perspective, uh, well, from at least my perspective, a theological problem, yeah. which is that we believe that you are not to be held to account for you for something you would have done and you don't actually do. You are only held to account for that which you do. There's a, there is a hadith that we like a, a tradition that says that if a, if a slave or a person decides to do a bad action but doesn't follow through with it, he is not given the sin for it and so on. So is that view which is that what would have been the case the possibility the realm of possibility though it is represented in the islamic tradition is not one i personally subscribe to what i believe good because yeah, that yeah. would have contradicted what ali said no, yeah, yeah. But, that, but how does that sorry just to, now i have a issue with you now yeah how well, does this is good how does, that, how does this so, because so, the eye is talking about yeah, me yeah. saying okay you know what yeah. i'm gonna go and stop you but i don't do it i get a good deal this is an action in this realm. What Allah is talking about is what they would have done. How does that conflict? No, no, no. So what Allah says is, he says, had they returned, they would have continued in what they were, the disbelief or whatever it is they done. It's not saying that he predicated the judgment of their hellfire on that fact. He's just saying that this is a fact. He's not saying, therefore, because of that, okay. we yeah. predicate our judgment on that fact. So that they, if they were to yeah, it's just a conditional. Okay. It's, it's, um, that doesn't what, then totally tally with what I'm not taking apart, but it doesn't seem to totally tally with the way you describe it to me. And I thought Ali, the way Ali sold it to me, it worked and it balanced. Right, right. There, there is a view like that in Islam. It's a minority view. But what I'm saying is, um, the, the truth of the matter is this, is that 
we, we believe if you, don't, if you don't enact something, you're not punished for it. The real way we put it is this, is that the presupposition, as I was explaining to you before, yeah. is that the punishment has to be proportionate in time with the crime. And, I, and I'll give you this example. That would be just and merciful. I'm seeking right, right, right. So here's, here's what I'm saying. Look, if, I, 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 if this man here, this good looking man, yes, <laughs> he pulls out a knife. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't because that happened before some time <laughs> ago. Uh, anyway, and, 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 and he puts it and he kills me or kills this man next to him or, or something like that, right? Yeah. Hopefully no one actually does this. But let's say someone does that. Now he kills me, I, I said this to you before. And then he's presented in a court of law. And then the judge says to him, okay, we're going to, or the jury even, we're going to decide on the appropriate punishment. And this man, this strapping young man, he comes in front of the judge and he says, look, I want to be punished for exactly one second because the time I spent to kill this man yeah. was one second. Yeah. Therefore, the punishment should be one second because the crime took a second to commit. Now, someone will say, well, actually, that makes no sense because actually... The crime, the gravity of the crime, despite it being a second, uh -huh. was enormous. The enormity of the gravity of the crime was huge. Therefore, this, this kind of reasoning wouldn't even apply. Yeah, I agree, it would be patchwork. Okay. Yes, yes. However, when you extend to infinity, infinity is a totally different order of measurement, yeah? Yes. Now, the, I, I'm not suggesting that a one-second crime should have a one-second punishment. It should be, to an extent, consequentialist and proportional. But once you start magnifying things to infinity, it means that even if everybody on the planet were to suffer torture for a hundred years, it would still be less than if Dawood, God forgive, God forbid, were to suffer um, infinite torture forever. That would be, still be right. more. So, infinity just changes so, so, the whole So Tony, there's, there's, there's something you've done here which requires justification on your part. We've, you said you agree with the fact that it's not always the case that if... Uh, a person mm -hmm. commits a crime that the, uh, the, uh, the, the punishment should be proportionate in crime yeah. but then you said that shouldn't extend to infinity now this is a value judgment which requires a, a burden of proof actually uh, why, would it, why, would it, why would what would work and be operational on a finite level not be generalized to the infinite I would argue the burden of proof actually would be on you to prove the opposite okay. because I'm simply arguing so, that finite versus yeah. finite is inherently proportional and yeah. almost self-evident, no, whereas yeah. infinity versus finite I understand that. disparities. Yeah. I think the burden of proof no, is No, no, no. This is the point. You're saying that justice entails yeah. that there should be proportionality in time in the infinite realm. I'm saying that if I'm dealing with a just and merciful deity, if he's not just and merciful, then no. No, no, no. But this, this is another question here, right? Because whether, now you're introducing a theological element. Yep. Because in our first example, there was no theological element. So well, it, it arose within the context of a theological discussion no, about of course. a just and it, merciful God. That's right. But we do have a just and merciful God in the Islamic tradition, okay. but not just a just and merciful God. We have a just and merciful and wise God. Okay. And we, there's many different attributes. So if we were to introduce two attributes, it would follow theologically that we should introduce all the attributes that are mentioned in the, in the text. Do you see the point? Yeah, but it would have to be so consistent to all of those attributes. Yeah, yeah, so obviously. Yeah. I, the, my one underlying principle yeah, yeah. is I seek self consistency right. within a discipline and right. relative to other disciplines. Yeah. Yes. So I think it's reasonable to look at any religion or ideology or human being and go, are they being self consistent? And we all understand when people are not self consistent. If somebody lies or they're dishonest or they're duplicitous, we all spot that instantly. Mm. So the acid test for truth seems to be self consistency. And if I'm presented with well, a just and merciful God by Muslims and Christians, mm. and I'm kind of a fan of both, okay, right, well, then I expect to see acted out yes. a just and merciful policy well, and infinity versus the finite, infinite punishment for a finite transgression. Okay. On the uh, what, what I will say, what I'll say to you is uh, what you've outlined epistemologically is what is a necessary condition for truth but according to majority understanding is not an, uh, a sufficient condition for truth because con well, I wasn't uh, claiming it was sufficient but I do think yeah it's so it's valid, necessary it's so, far. It's, so you're saying that in order for truth to be truth that it would have to be at least consistent so we need to tick that box yes so no, if, if, if that's true. what you're saying then we yeah. agree now so there's two uh, aspects of burden that you have in terms of proving your postulation if in fact you are making a claim <laughs> The first one would be that in the infinite realm, that punishment has to be a proportionate in time. For example, had someone committed X crime, 
in, in the finite realm that that should not right yeah. translate to yeah. why punishment in the infinite realm. Yeah. This is a claim. You can't say There's it's no not. Way I'm making that claim. Right, right, great. So you would have to provide evidence for that claim. You see. I don't think the burden of proof is on. It, it is. It's definitely on you. You can shut down that. Just, I think it's a natural human response. Yeah. If you're seeking self-consistency. No, but to you're, argue no. that that is a disproportionate okay. situation. Let me but Ali squared the circle. He did square the circle. No, but before, before we get to Ali's squaring of the circle, no. let's go back. Isn't that impossible uh, existence? No, no, no but let's let... let <laughs> no, yeah, I know he, We're going into necessary and no, 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 look, 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 look. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is, yeah. yeah, if you make a claim, you have to have some level of justification for that claim, all right? I do. Truth is self-consistent. Truth if is self-consistent. the God are justice and merciful, it's wait, wait, wait. me. Wait, wait, wait. We, we could yep. poll the crowd no, no. on whether they that's, think... That's the fallacy. Because okay. the, the crowd could be ignorant. I agree. Yeah. But just as an yeah. opening... And, opening. And, but the fact that he's there is definitely okay. some level of ignorance okay. inside. Okay. Everyone is like, I'm only caught. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I, I would, we're, we're just getting trenched here. I would contest that the burden of proof would be on you to show that no, okay. infinite punishment for punishment. No, no, you were, you were saying something important. You said that you expect self-consistency. Yeah. And then you said that the attributes of God are X and Y. Well, and then well, you said Islam, I see, think, claims justice and mercy. So right, does right. Christianity. So ex it's a ex good exact, white debate. No yeah? problem, but that's not all it claims, right? For sure. So it claims other attributes. So we can't select. If we want to say that we're, we're talking about God's attributes as per X theological tradition, uh -huh. we have to include all the attributes of God Absolutely, as per that. But it shouldn't contravene with any them. of that multiplicity. So you're yeah, great. It's accepted. Right, yeah. Meaning that these attributes cannot contradict each other, basically. Yeah. So accepted. We both have the same ex ex truth. Accepted. But here's what you have to understand now about the Islamic tradition. Uh -huh. That the way we, we conceive of the attributes of God is in a tripartite classification. So what you have is you have what we refer to as the intrinsic attributes of God. Mm -hmm. Then you have the will of God, and then you have what you refer to as the 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 action-based uh, attributes of God. So, for instance, an intrinsic attribute of God is His necessity, His oneness, mm -hmm. uh, or the power of God, the omnipotence of God, the omniscience of God, and so on. Uh, the the will is an intrinsic attribute of God, but it directs the actions of God. Sure. Now, so what I'm saying is that there are some things God can decide to do uh -huh. and can decide to offset or post-date. For instance, because God has will, which we can, we can if you want, uh, argue on first principles, because God has will, He decides to do X rather than Y or Y rather than X, because this is, by definition, what volition is, uh -huh. which, means he can put, which means He can suspend the actions of X attribute in favor of the actions of Y, and He can... Uh, he can uh, perform the actions of Y attribute rather than the actions of X and he does so based on perfect knowledge which is the intrinsic attribute of God. Does this make sense? Let me say one more time. God... Hang on, you asked me if it makes sense. Does it make sense? It could, but uh, it's a, it, it could also be interpreted as a circular argument which gives him carte blanche to do whatever he wants because it means no. that phenomenologically he doesn't have to be self-consistent no. with the way he's presented himself thus far. Oops. So although it might be a valid interpretation of reality, it's you'd have to you'd have to demonstrate you would have to demonstrate the circularity. I'd also point out just as a sideline, and we won't go here. Yeah. It's interesting that you are happy to suddenly have a vaguely trinitarian nature to God when I know uh, no, well, Christian. You you can understand the idea no, look, of therefore breaking one look, thing down into look. three. Yeah. Well, well, of course. Uh, Good. It would be, uh, it would be listen, nice to, in the end Tony, of the debate with the Christians if occasionally <laughs> Tony, didn't Tony, the truth. Tony, listen to me. Yeah. Tony, there's a world of difference between talking about three persons and three uh, three types of attributes. So you're clever enough to understand that. Yeah, yeah. Let me give you... Let me. I, I, just, I just don't believe this. To I don't believe that you guys can't buy the idea, just for a second, yeah. that hydrogen 2 plus oxygen, yeah, as a molecule, we'd all agree it's one thing, but it can manifest as a gas, it can manifest as ice, and it right. can manifest as a vapor. Now, I'm not accepting, uh, okay. I expect you to... Are you, a, are, you, are you a Christian? Uh, of sorts. Okay, well, I, let, me, let me... What you've... Uh, you, what, you, you were a Christian Tony, wouldn't Tony, think so. I like religion. I listen to me, Tony. To listen to me. Yes. Listen yes, to me. Yes, Mahal. Yes. What you've described is a modal understanding of God. Correct. Now, in, in, in modern day Christian understanding, when you talk about Protestantism and Catholicism, this is seen as heretical because you have... I'm not right, subscribed to no, no problem, I'm just, let's just put that out there. First of all, the, the, why this is problematic and even is seen as problematic by the majority of philosophers of religion, yeah. William Haskar, even I, I believe uh, William Lane Craig, others see this as a problematic kind of understanding yeah. and have some other analogies to, uh, to present. 
is because it suggests that God can be X form or Y form or Z form. What can't happen is that water is water and ice and gas at the same time. All three doesn't... No, don't we, no we agree, but we would also agree that simultaneously it's essential nature. Are you with me, Tony? You we, know what, I've digressed the conversation. I, I know you have, but no, no, let's just get this out of the way. You can't... This could take time. No, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is, the, uh, modalism is the idea that God changes. The Father changes to the Son, Son changes the Holy Spirit. That you have different modes of God. But this is, why this is heretical on mainstream's understanding of Christianity is because the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is something which should always exist co-eternally, um, co-equally and so on. But with the modal understanding, there's transformation going on. If you're talking about water to ice and ice to gas, yeah. then when water is ice, it's not gas. And when it's, when it's gas, it's not ice. And no, so there's, it's always H2O. But what we're saying is, with, it's, it's always, always H2O. No, but that's irrelevant because we're saying that the form has changed. If you, if you apply this to God, uh, Father, Son, and I expected the form has changed, but ontologically, the essence of the thing is consistent. Well, now, well. I also, I'm not, I, don't, I don't have to defend the people who are traditionalists because I'm not. No, no, but remember, on the tr uh, traditional Trinitarian understanding, there is no uh, idea of the Father being either the Father or the Son of the Holy Spirit at any given time. It's that it's, it's, the, it's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit at all times, co equally and co Right, great. Now, let's go back to the. All, all, um, yeah, let's go, let's go so, back to so, the. So, so, look, when we talk about self consistency, yeah. we're talking about we have to differentiate between parts. <laughs> yeah. We have to differentiate between parts and attributes. Now, H2O is two two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Yeah. Now what I say is that anything that is made out of pieces is dependent. H2O is made out of pieces, therefore H2O is dependent. Now that doesn't apply to God because there's a world of difference between attributes and parts. I, I, I literally only meant this. I meant as an, an thank you. Don't worry. As an analogy for how something can be intrinsically one thing but have three facets. Yeah. I think well, just we've, as we've an explained analogy, this. You can wrap your head around. Right, right. right. So, 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 as we've said, because when Muslims just, seem to be mystified by the idea of a trinity, I would hope yeah. that at least they can embrace. It's the not mystified. I think no, no. The, the, let's be honest. Christians have been, if you want to call it that, mystified and confused about the idea of the Trinity, which is why you've had three, you've had different schools of thought, modalism being one of them, tritheism being on the opposite end of the spectrum. So if, if it was a straightforward idea, yeah. uh, which is un, uh, mystified or otherwise unencoded, or it's not, uh, there's no element of uh, confusion in it, then there wouldn't have been such an array well, of understanding. What I think is it's a tenable idea to explore. I'm not saying it's proven, well, it's, and you may well be fine. Right. But we've explained, we've explained why th this idea is problematic oh, as per... Problematic, Great, good, beautiful. It, that doesn't kill it. Yeah, does, I believe it does kill it. But let's move on to the next bit. The, the, the idea is, now you said something important. I said there's a tripartite classification or categorization or compartmentalization of the attributes of God, intrinsic will and verbal attributes. These okay, are the three. I'll buy that for now, for now. What I'm saying is that there is a difference, and we have to make this difference, between parts and attributes because if I were to tell you, right, that you have an electric razor and then you have a cutthroat razor, yeah. Right, the electric razor has many different parts. Yep. Now, the cutthroat razor has no parts, but has more attributes. It has more functional attributes, because you can cut an orange with it, and you can cut a throat with it. So you can do more with a cutthroat razor than you can with an electric razor, despite the fact that the electric razor has more parts. So what I'm saying is that we must be able to differentiate between centers of consciousness, A, and or parts on the one hand or attributes on the other. With the Trinity example, you have three centers of consciousness. We go to the electric razor example. We're not going to the cutthroat razor example. With the Islamic, with the Islamic understanding is, we're going to the cutthroat razor example. We're saying God is not composed of pieces. And therefore we can, just because God is simple, doesn't mean it doesn't have many attributes. Just like a cutthroat razor can do many things functionally. Okay. For the, right. for the record. So just, 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 just yeah, yeah, of course, of course. For the record, yeah. I think monism, monistic religion, is the ideal way to go. You guys are very big on it, congratulations. Okay? okay. So I think monism, I'm on, I'm on board with monism. I suspect that the Christians think that they can incorporate the concept of a trinity, maybe in a metaphorical sense, within a monistic framework, and that may be tenable. And that your hostility to it as a metaphor is maybe undue. But I think both religions, all the Abrahamic religions are essentially monistic, and that's a good thing, yeah? It's just a shame that so much time gets spent well, here constantly banging on about two particular we things can talk about Christians come at you guys about certain I understand. Can you answer for the justice? Because no. No. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I'd like to get... Let, let's get, let's sorry, get... I, all right, going like, back. Go on, no, but these are important preambles. Monism is something else. I, we can talk about this yeah, and, right. and to what extent it can be interpreted in the, within the Islamic framework, but that's a different discussion. Yeah. Let's talk about what you talked about uh, today. Yeah. Now, the question is, how can we establish 
because to say something is just or unjust yeah. requires a theory of justice. Yeah. Mine is that it's equivalent, it's balanced, yeah? An eye for a, yeah, if you take an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, I don't believe in that. But the concept of live by the sword, die by the sword, in Christianity, there are whole references. In Buddhism, there are references to there being some equivalence of cause and effect, yeah? Uh, yes. So I think that's common to most no, religions, no, no, but I expect that to be reflected well, in justice. Well, 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 here's the problem. And this is the argument I make, it's called the argument from divine value, okay? okay. I'm making this, I'm, I'll put this argument to you. Uh -huh. I've said this before on Speaker's Corner, but I'm, I'm going to say it again. You see this tree behind you right there, yeah? I'm going to tell you one more time. This tree behind you. Now, if I get this tree and I cut it up into little pieces, mm -hmm. all right, it's a living tree, yeah. accepted. Now, you might think that's a reprehensible action. I don't know. Maybe you think it's okay. It's fine, depending on what the motivation is. Yeah. But now, if I get a small child from St. Mary's Hospital that's yeah. just been born, yeah, I feel different. Yeah. and I cut that baby into little pieces, is it equivalent, according to you, or is it different? No, because you're contravening the will of the child, whereas the tree hasn't got a will. Right, great. So you're, what, you've, what you've basically made is an attributional difference. That the child has some attribute that yeah. the tree doesn't have, which makes me transgressing against the rights of the child yeah. more reprehensible than me transgressing or, or well, cutting... the tree has any rights, so it's not a problem. No problem. Well, it's living, so I mean, there are some similarities. It doesn't but cross the line to me, yeah. It doesn't no, feel anything, so I don't No care. problem. But, 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 trees you communicate with each other. But oh, no, if the tree feels something, that. it's got rights. It doesn't, it doesn't. We can make the argument. But what I'm saying is that the difference between the tree and the baby is an attributional difference. Yeah. Now, what we are saying is when the object of transgression becomes infinite in its attributional quantity. Stop. Sorry, just got to absorb that. That's a big deal for your viewers as well. That's Welcome going to, be a big to my deal. life. Okay, fine. When the what? Run. Okay. When the attribution. You have subject and object. Correct. Good. Subject Excellent. is me. Yeah. Now, object is I'm holding my mobile phone. Excellent. So I'm doing something to the object. Yeah. Now, if I'm doing something to the tree, uh -huh. the tree is the object. Correct. If I'm doing something to the baby, yeah. the baby is the object. And simultaneously a subject, which is why it has rights. No, yeah. I am the subject and the baby is an object. No, in that situation, you're both ontologically, you are both subjects. And the it, no, if that I'm doing something, if it's passive yeah, and yeah, I'm active. Yeah. And the reason that what you're doing is offensive is precisely because you're affecting another subject. Oh, yeah, I get that. No, I, so I meant in a grammatical term. There's subject and object in sentences, yeah? The dual. Yeah, well, I meant dual ontologically. So the one who's... I mean, so the Cartesian divide no, yeah, yeah. no, 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 I didn't mean it like that. So I'm talking gr grammar. grammatically. Sorry, you meant grammar. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, subject, yeah. object, okay. okay? I cut the tree. I am I am the subject, that is the object. Apologies. Yes, you're right. It's grammatical. Sorry. Right. I thought you were being Cartesian. No. Well, that's what I mean by object. It's good that you asked me. Now, if I... I'm trans now. We said the difference between the tree and the baby is attributional. That the baby has attribute, which is in this case will, and the, 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 the tree doesn't have. Now I say, if that's the case, then the more of such attribute the object has, the more of a crime transgressing against the object is. And in this case, we say that God has an infinite level of, for example, power attribute, knowledge attribute, and so on. Uh -huh. He's worthy of worship from our paradigm. And so transgressing against the ultimate in attributional quantity sh means that you should, it means that you, to you belongs the highest level of punishment. Because if I cut the tree into two pieces, I shouldn't be punished, I think you'd agree, in the same way if I cut the baby into two pieces. Because the object, is, the object has more attribute. But with God, the attribute is so in intense and is in infinite in attributes, which means if I transgress against that, that object, which means I should be given the highest punishment even if it's for a little bit of time. The crime is done against infinite, right. the punishment is infinite. Can I just take this on board now? Yes. Right, right. so, the first conversation I had with Ali, I was surprised because I thought he balanced the two infinites, yeah? right, right. and I had to concede that and I would have moved on to a discussion on determinants, okay. yeah? because I think the, the negative overflow to that. You've now hit me with a new thing, which I hadn't heard before and I'm taking on board, right? right. And it seems to me no offence, yeah, your argument is cogent, yeah. but it might also involve a little bit of circular sleight of hand because what seems to be being said yeah. maybe is that effectively anything you do which contravenes God's law is an effect against an infinite being with infinite faculties and therefore infinite punishment is appropriate. Now, I can see that as a cogent line of argument. Right. I can also see maybe it's not such a cogent line of argument well, you're, you're, in terms of yeah. you're no, you're, you, you've now got the circular framework in which you can argue that anything you do against God is an infinite transgression, whereas at least in a secular sense, and I know we would secularly agree that our view of fair play would be that 
the crime is against the individual baby and not the baby isn't an individual. Let, let me put it in a syllogism. Let me put it let me put it in a syllogism. Well, let me put it in a syllogism for you and tell me where it's circular, right? Yeah. <clears throat> the higher the attributional value mm -hmm. an object has, the more the punishment should be for the subject. You could argue that, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree. Great. I need to think about Premise it. Premise two, yeah. God's, uh, God's uh, attributional value it's is infinite. infinite. Therefore, yeah. Therefore, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 oh, no, 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 that's, yeah. that's, not, that's not right. That's, sorry, that's not right. It should be the, uh, the level of punishment uh -huh. of the object yeah. is concurrent, uh, sorry, the subject yeah. is concurrent with the level of uh, uh, the, the, the attributional value of the object the attributional value of the subject uh -huh. of the object yeah. of god is infinite therefore the punishment should be infinite yeah no i get what you're saying but what you're doing with that yeah. and it may be legitimate or it may not you're deflecting the focus of the sin in the original example sorry Ali, by the moment. in the original example i am say I don't want to stab Ali, that's such a bad analogy. Right, uh, whatever. Okay, um, I... By the way, you know he's not negating what I said. He's saying this is another... Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm, interested, I'm interested in how it ties up. But if, if I commit a crime against Ali, mm. then he is the object who doesn't have infinite qualities, and therefore that my punishment shouldn't be infinite. Yeah? Great, yeah, it's true. But you're arguing that the fact that I've sinned against Ali contravenes God's law, and because God is infinite, therefore anything I do, even if it's a finite transgression, no, but but what you've what, what no 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 what you've done there is different. Well, then I've mis I've misquoted. No, because the object the subject here is not God directly. Yeah, I'm the subject. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, the, the object is not God because when we say the object, what necessitates an eternity of punishment in the hellfire is not you going against a being with finite quantity. Um, Co uh, uh, no, with finite qualities like Ali. Yeah, I did, that if you go against them, you wouldn't go to hell forever. That doesn't work like that. Yeah, right. You only go to hell forever when you commit shirk, which is uh, associating partners with God, or you commit kufr, which is denying God in the first place is worthy of worship, for example, right? Yeah. Now, what I'm saying is, in those two examples, the direct object of transgression yeah. is God, but not just in the sense that you're going against his law, he is actually the object of in a, uh, inappropriate. So let me tell you how, right? So hang on, yeah, to, be, yeah, to be clear. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying, if prima facie, it seemed to me you were saying that because you contravene his law. No. And you're not just saying no. that, but you are saying that. No, no, not the law. No, no, no. So it's not because I contradicted law. Nothing to do with the law here. The law wasn't actually made. Even the syllogism I said, I never said the word law. Okay. When, I say, when I say going against, right? So inappropriacy, because in, in the Arabic, zulm, which means oppression, is basically inappropriate. In, inappropriate. Putting something in other than it's an appropriate place. That's literally what um, zulm or oppression means. So our theory of justice is inappropriacy. The more inappropriate you are, the more oppressive you are. So how are you inappropriate with God? You're inappropriate where you redirect you redirect the worship you owe, you owe God to other than God. And that is what I mean by when, when you're transgressing against the object. You're transgressing against the object in so much as, you, so this God with infinite, uh, whatever it may be, uh, knowledge, power, and so on, you are redirecting the veneration and worship you should have with that God uh -huh. to something with limited of those variables, X, Y, Z variables, and that inappropriacy deserves an infinite punishment because there's an infinite gap there, if you like. Okay, now it sounds to me like you're describing the sin of idolatry and it would work Yes, for that. yes, only that. Only that. Okay, but the, the, the sin of me... Shirk and kufr. The sin of me hurting the baby... Yes, it's not. It's not a sin of idolatry. Exactly. It's a sin against So we wouldn't baby. say that baby, uh, hurting the baby, yeah. killing the baby, anything, that, that, that does not by itself mean that you'll spend the hellfire uh, 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 all time in the hellfire forever. Oh good. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, it's just yes. shit, so you it's don't just, it's, right. just, it's just polytheism and it's just kufr or uh, disbelief that guarantees you the eternity. Nothing else guarantees you, you the eternity. So, then maybe, upon it. so if only idolatry and offense against God pers on a more personal yes. level, which gives you infinite punishment. Or, or, or disbelief in him as worthy of worship and redirecting that worship to someone else. I don't know, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Sorry.
disbelief in him. Now, I would take, if I disbelieve in your particular representation of God, which right. may be accurate or yeah. may not, yeah. I consider that what I've done there is make a finite choice with finite faculties, and therefore it's a finite transgression. No, but if, you're, if, if you are redirecting your veneration and worship, yeah. which is the appropriate action you should have with the all-knowing necessary being, yeah. if you, and the independent one, if you redirect that action yeah. to something which is dependent and finite and, 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 and contingent and so on, then what you're doing is you are fulfilling the, the syllogism, if you like. Yeah. It's only in that action where the ultimate punishment will be justified. Okay, so as long as I'm in some way sort of offending God in person, infinite punishment. You said that beautiful. Does that yeah, work? yeah, excellent. Okay. So long as what you're doing is being inappropriate yeah. with the worship of God, yeah. uh, qua God, mm -hmm. then that is where the eternal punishment comes. That's why we actually have hadith, which okay, is... so we have an agreement. I can understand. Yes. I'm not saying I agree yeah. with it, but yeah. I can understand it cogent. So, so what we if say... I, if I offend God personally, then infinite punishment is appropriate because God is an infinite being. Yes. Yes? Beautiful. Excellent. If you okay. die... No, but do you know, do you know what I say? Come one more. On, on this point, yeah. that's why we say there is actually a, um, a saying of the Prophet yeah. that anyone with even an atom's weight of yeah. Iman, which basically means faith in their heart, yeah. would not spend their entire time in the hellfire, even an atom's weight. Okay, great. Right, right. Now, so, I didn't know this. I assumed that you believed in infinite punishment in hell. Yeah, we do. We do. You do. But, oh, but for, the, for what you've said. Only for what I just said. Yeah, but, but here's what we would say, we'd caveat with this. Yeah. The only way to appropriately worship God yeah. is through his instruction. And the only way to do so through his instruction is through the prophets. Yeah, you see, and, this is uh, where I feel the small print might be sneaking back in. And there's no small print going, there. It might just be going, no but given that anything you do which is against the teachings of, say, the Quran, would be offensive to God, ergo, if you do anything against the teachings of the Quran, it's appropriate to go to But if you believe in those teachings, no, but if you... Yes? Be, no, it's, it's, Are you saying that? No. Good. How no, not? Because if you believe in those teachings yeah. and you believe in the wor that God is worthy of worship, these are the predicate beliefs. Uh -huh. If you have those beliefs even at an atom's weight, yeah. then you would be disqualified from an eternal punishment. Good. Yeah. That's nice. Yes, 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 so yes. Okay, so do you know what I've learned from sorry, doing this circle yeah. about hell? Because yeah. I asked yeah. Bob, you might yeah. like this, I asked Bob the Builder. Turns out Bob doesn't believe in infinite punishment in hell either. Yeah, and I didn't know this. During the discussion, I discovered he believed that either you go to heaven or you kind of fade into nothingness and cease to exist. And he says it's not a standard Christian view, but it's one he subscribed to. He showed me it in the Bible. Now, that was nice to discover. It's also nice to discover that you don't necessarily believe in infinite punishment. For, in no, for definitely in all cases. Okay, but yeah. to a lot of people who are laymen coming into this, we think you believe that, and it sounds draconian. But mm. neither you nor Bob I mean, actually believe let's... anything quite that hard line. One more thing. Yeah. To be fair, and, and this might sound controversial, uh -huh. but Ibn Taymiyyah, who he didn't believe, like Ibn Taymiyyah is one of the heavyweight scholars. Uh -huh. uh, he has two views, all right? So one, he says that eternal punishment in the hellfire is uh, sanctionable, and, yep. and the other one is not. Okay. And the truth of the matter is his student, which is Ibn Qayyim, in his book, Shifa al Alil, yeah. he basically takes the view that hellfire runs out even for disbelievers. Good. So, uh, I don't it's know if it's good, good or not. I disagree with it. It but feels more just and merciful than no, no, ever. No, it feels no, it might be good or bad, but I'm yeah. just telling you that this is a view, even though it's aberrational. It is uh, an aberrational view. You don't believe that. You don't believe oh, that. I, don't, I personally don't subscribe. Like I said, you, like, with Tufi, there well, might be forever. views that. You do, you do believe it's forever. But only if it's against those, God. Yes. No, for those who die in idolatry, it's yeah. forever. Okay. Yes. That still to me feels harsh. Maybe I'm a bit of a but, yeah. Flake, you know, right? Can I, can I add one thing here, uh, yeah. Tony? Yeah. Um, you know when you said, for example, that's not just. In order for you to truly comprehend and understand yeah. the violation, you need to. Yes, you can't comprehend point. because what, what's happening here is you're assuming, and it's you're right. You're a human being. Mm. Yeah. You're saying, well, that's not just. One thing Allah says in the Quran is that the people in the hellfire are never going to say. You wronged us. It's very interesting because they're in hellfire, yeah. and the God's telling us they're burning. And they and, still don't learn their lesson even in hell. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. And what the point is here? None of them say the following. No, no. They're, they're in the hellfire, they know what, what what's going on. Yeah, right? No, they don't obviously. recant. No, they recant. They do recant. They recant. It's too late. It's too yeah, it's too late. Yeah. yeah. It's like that is rough. That is no, 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 no. One second. One second. <laughs> if you sincerely recant. No, but, but, but no, 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 but recanting in what in what domain? No, no, but it goes in what dimension? But Tony, it's too late. Tony, goes back to what I said to you. Because Allah says. If they were to send back, and what they say to Allah, they say, give us a chance. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Don't say, oh God, why are you making us suffer in hellfire forever? Just because yeah. we just committed adultery. They don't say that. They say, give us a chance. Yeah. And the point here is, the fact that they say, give us a chance, shows something very interesting. It shows that God's justice is done in such a perfect way, they are not complaining of being in the fire. They accept and know they deserve being in the fire forever. Yeah. They're asking for a chance, which means 
because we don't comprehend what um, shirk is, like what associating partners to God is, we uh, fall in a contradiction like in within, in within our thought process of, but hold on a second, we can't fathom it. It's sure. such a great sin. We believe it's, there is no sin on this earth that can come close to shirk. So just so you as you understand, I think you're, you're arguing to a level of mysticism, maybe. That I think, no, no, uh, I no. Look, look, what I'll say to you, Tony, is this: so what, what we did here. If you, if, I'm not knocking it. But I, I, think I understand. Yeah, but if we, if we, if we, if we extent, review, yeah, let's, Tony, let's review, let's review, let's review something, okay? Uh -huh. We've spoken for about twenty to thirty minutes. Okay. About yeah, let's wrap up. Uh, yeah, we're going to do determinism. Can we do determinism another time? Yeah, of course, of course. Cool. But what I'm saying is that we spoke for twenty thirty minutes about. Hellfire, and I've given you the the argument from divine value, which I appreciate. Yeah, and I've shown you how, and you said it's cogent, and it's you cogent. Know, I'm not saying I'm buying it, but I, I'm buying it's that cogent. It's, I'm buying that it's cogent. It's, it's considered its right, right, beautiful. Now, here's what I want to say to you: is uh, that's perfect. That's all you can do right now, yeah. because I know it might feel emotionally off-putting <laughs> and intellectually a bit. But no, no, but intellectually, you've already explained it's cogent. That's the intellectual value judgment. Yeah. Right. There, are other, uh, there are other cogent intellectual ways of looking at when it. We, when we're saying uh, cogent, yeah, 100%, no doubt. I'm not saying it's the only conceivable possibility, oh. definitely. But what I am saying is, so long as it's cogent, now what we really need to discover yeah. is whether the authority of the Quran and Sunnah is actually justified or not. If it is, then this is something which is rational and reasonable. If it's not, if you, according to you, then yeah. you don't need to accept it in the first place. I think... I think I don't know. I, but that's what we really need to investigate because it's, it's like we're talking about... I, th I think you may be handicapping yourself here by placing... You're not going to like this. No. The emphasis that I think you have on the literal truth of every syllable of the Quran. I think might be a bit of a dead weight. No, I don't, even have, I don't, I don't have that hermeneutical approach. Oh, you don't? No, no, no. I, don't have... I didn't know that. I'm learning shit all the time. Yeah, no, no. We don't have that. I don't think anyone... Most only person that really believed that there's no metaphors in the Quran was so it been tamed? Was it been okay, tamed? Good, good, good. So then, the, the, one of the questions is, what's the latitude on the metaphors? Yeah, and this yeah, is what the yeah, hate yeah. is about: is how, how you yeah, interpret yeah. this stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, these are the constructive discussions. I think to have more than speakers' corner. For sure. Maybe less of just the bear baiting between For, extremes of position. Yeah? For sure. The determinism question is an important one as well. But Which what? We can come to. But I think the best thing we can do first, mm -hmm. I think, especially if we is to establish the existence of God and what kind of God we're talking about from first principles. Because when we get that, that's the, that is really the trunk, that's the root of the tree. And everything else comes as... Well, you're going to go for the cosmological argument. No, 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 no I don't. No, no, no. I, I, I uh, advocate a different kind of argument, not the Kalam cosmological argument of William Lane Craig. I've watched uh, an eight-minute video of you going... That was about six years ago, okay, maybe seven. I don't want to hold you to it because you're allowed to yeah, change yeah, it, yeah. but I watched... No, 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 I, it's not like I don't have a problem... It's not like I disagree with the findings of the cosmological argument, but it's not the argument I would present. Okay. The argument I would present is a very simple one, if you want to do it quickly, right? I did, look, dude, I'm loving this conversation. I like having constructive ones, and yeah. I didn't know this was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. We've covered a bit of it. I'd love to do with you... We'll do it, ag we'll do it again. ...and the cosmological argument, or your version The contingency of argument. Time. Would that be good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Okay. Fantastic, yeah, my friend. Nice Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much, much, man. Thank you. Listen, can I big up Dawood, please? Oh, on sure. camera, because he... Dawood is... How could you big him up when he's already bigged up? <laughs> well, I've, even more. I've, I've just seen Gao very consistently doing yes, a yes. terrific um, broadcast on YouTube. The speech yes. he made last week, everybody should watch, yes. about how this is a community and it was very heartfelt and more eloquent than I could be. So watch this guy when he's online, look out for him, he's great, and he's on Ali Darwa's team. Oh, yeah, well, we'll, we'll want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Team, he's a really good guy. So yeah, yeah, that. you don't have to tell me. But yeah, thank you for saying it. Great, and um, thank you very much. Anytime, uh, friend. Anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we're just going to pray now. Until then, brother. How are you doing? You okay? Good to see you, man.